Hi there, and welcome to the Cotswold Explorer. I'm Robin Shuckborough, and we're exploring the wonderful region of the Cotswolds in southwest England. We've decided to revisit the centre of the region and find some hidden gems, places that are not quite so famous, but still just as beautiful. You find Ross Widget and me today in the village of Charlbury. This is a beautiful village right on the edge of the Blenheim estate. It was probably originally just a clearing in the forest, but now it's a very pretty town with some extremely interesting buildings. Not least a railway station built by Isambard Kingdom Brunel. We're going to show you round. Behind me you'll notice, for a start, a wonderful drinking fountain and I'll tell you more about that in a minute. Come with us. Charlbury was probably first settled in early Anglo-Saxon times. Its name suggests a fortification from the word borough, and the name of a local bigwig, probably Quirl. It's certain there was scattered occupation of the area at the time of the Romans and even earlier, but the first proper settlement seems to have been Saxon. Most of the grander houses in the town, however, date from or were extensively rebuilt in the 18th century. It looks as though the early town was a simple village of small, rubble-built cottages. The town lies on the eastern bank of the River Evenlode, a river we've mentioned often, not least as an obstacle to the armies in the Civil War. It's another of these shallow, clear streams fed by springs higher in the hills, and it flows east to join the Thames near Wolvercote. The way this town has developed owes a lot to the fact that it has fallen under the control of a succession of hugely influential religious institutions and families, all of whom were absentee landlords. There was a market granted to the town by Henry III in 1256, but it doesn't appear to have been particularly successful, and the town doesn't really feel as if it has a centre. Pre-Reformation, the Abbey of Ensham ruled supreme here, and subsequently, after the reign of Henry VIII, the families of Lee at Ditchley, two miles to the north, took over the manor for 200 years leading, amidst a tangled tale of widowhood, debauchery and bawdy verse, to an association with the Earl of Rochester, and finally into the hands of the Churchill family, later to become the Dukes of Marlborough. This is the family in whose domain the town still lies, within the enormous Blenheim estate. We've seen glimpses of it in the past. The 21st century family are very far from absentee landlords, and the recent development of the town reflects their proximity. Communications have always been good here, and when the railway arrived, Isambard Kingdom Brunel himself built a station at Charlbury, which still stands. It's built in the chalet style he favoured and is the only one of its kind to survive on his famous Oxford, Worcester and Wolverhampton Railway. The presence of the railway has, of course, helped Charlbury rise above its slightly undignified start in life. And there is a buzz of active village life here with a strong sense of community. This perhaps shows itself particularly well in the story of the Church of St Mary the Virgin, for the full story of their late 20th century woes, you can visit their website, but suffice here to say that they were attacked by all the structural pests you can think of. Beetles, floods, rots of various kinds, even fire, and a huge refurbishment became necessary. Over a third of a million pounds was raised locally to do the work, and a decision was made to reorder the church with the creation of a second western altar, the removal of the 19th century deal pews, and the replacement of the old wooden floor with Cotswold stone. 
The overall effect may not be to everybody's taste, but the success of the scheme for the villagers and the building's use and survival is clear for all to see. The particularly wonderful spiral staircase onto the bell ringer's platform, built in the late 17th century, is worth a journey to Charbury all on its own. The nearby estate of Cornbury Park, less than a mile from the village on the other side of the railway line, is a wonderful house with a long history as a hunting lodge in the royal forest of Witchwood. It was probably first erected by Henry I in the early 12th century, but most of what we see today is 16th or 17th century. It's a private house and access is strictly controlled, but there are businesses in the outbuildings, and in the grounds the owners hold one of the very best music festivals in the area. It was here, in these fields, with the glorious floodlit house as a backdrop that I was lucky enough to hear two of my great idols, Joe Cocker and Amy Winehouse, before they sadly both left us. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our little trip around Charlbury. It's a much prettier town than I'd expected, a lovely stately home. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. You can find us on all the other platforms, of course, and visit our website on the cotswoldexplorer.co.uk where you'll find everything we do. We look forward to seeing you next week. Bye-bye.